Hello, everybody. It's uh, Jeff Kibbe here over at Metastock. I hope you're doing well today. Um, we're going to go ahead and start the presentation. I know we're a few minutes late, but we were just getting ready. We wanted to kind of give you guys the best experience possible. So welcome to the class. If you have questions as we go, um, feel free to ask. And uh, um, uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, read this legal disclaimer out for you. <laughs> Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Uh, Trey says, uh, good to see you today, Jeff. Uh, haven't heard from you for a while. Trey, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, I hope you're well. Um, Today, I really like it when we do these Ichimoku classes, and we really haven't done one for a while, but one of the things I like is we actually bring Robert in. Uh, we take over the conference room here. It's a mess. You should see it. We've got microphones everywhere and monitors and computers, and uh, we, we just take it over for a day, but it kind of gives a bit of a more unique feel. You know, we can sit here and chat back and forth. Uh, it's a lot funner uh, to have the presenter here, so I hope I hope that translates over for you guys. Um, in any case, I want to talk a little bit about Robert and just introduce you to him um, in case you're not familiar with him. Uh, when I started here, Ro uh, Robert was uh, one of our head uh, support technicians. And that was how many years ago now? Um, 20? About 20 years <laughs> yeah. ago. A little, actually, more than 20. Yeah. More than 20. So, um, and we get into the spirited debates about kind of the advantages and perils of like system testing and stuff like that. But, um, in, uh, uh, shortly into that, uh, he he left to become a system designer. And um, if you're familiar with Performance Systems Plus, it's one of our, uh, it's our all-time, we actually pulled up the numbers uh, last year, and it's our all-time best-selling plugin. He also made Trade Oracle and a Triangles add-on as well. And the thing about Robert is he's got a very intimate knowledge of Metastock, uh, and he has also got a really good technical knowledge and he has a good idea of how to make a good add-on. Uh, so last year, um, was last year, right? The, we we released? released? Mm -hmm. I think it was early last year, so it's been It was out. about June. Okay, okay. Yeah. So in about June of last year, we released the, yeah, that's right, because I remember uh, I was pretty impressed about how well it, it was selling, particularly for, uh, you know, summer in the software business when it comes to technical analysis is a, is a fairly, let's say seasonal time. <laughs> in other words, it's a great time to, to take a holiday if, I, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, but this, this product we released uh, last June, uh, people have really, really liked it. It's, uh, um, and we get a lot of really good feedback. And so I brought Robert back in today to kind of show you a little bit about what Ichimoku is, how it works. And then I'm gonna spend a few minutes actually talking about the product. So Robert, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? All right. How was the intro? Uh, intro is good. <laughs> All right. Good. Perfect time. Uh, I'm going to let you take over. Is there anything you want to add? Uh, no. I, I thought you were going to use your slides to show the intro to Ichimoku pieces. and. Uh, oh, you want to talk a little bit about Ichimoku? Yeah. Just okay. sure, go sure. ahead and do a start since you have the slides. All right. So just to kind of give you some background on the Ichimoku methodology, um, a guy by the name of Ichimoku Sanju created uh, a methodology back in the 1930s. So. Actually, uh, but it was released 50 years ago this year. 50 years ago this year. Not 1968. According to Wikipedia, that's right. <laughs> well, that's awesome. <laughs> I didn't have the year though. He said, it, it says like late 1960s. Mm -hmm. So Goicha Hisaida is actually his name. And I'm sure I, if you speak Japanese, Feel free to flame me on how how well I pronounce these uh, per, these kinky uh, these these names, but he also went by Go, uh, Ichimoku Sanjin. And if you're familiar with uh, Ichimoku, uh, uh, basically Ichimoku Kinko Hui, what it means is one glance equilibrium chart or an instant look at the balance chart. So that's kind of in uh, in essence what it's looking at. And we've had a chance um, to familiarize, actually, to get ready to start to kind of talk about this product. I learned all about the Ichimoku methodology. And I have to say, there's a couple things about Ichimoku 
um, that 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 I want to talk about. Number one is when you're initially looking at the indicators and when we start to pull up charts, at first it can be very, very confusing. And I think Robert would agree with that. Uh, based on the way all the indicators are calculated and stuff like that, it can be something that's very, very confusing. The other thing that kind of impresses me about the Ichimoku method in general is that it's something that is time tested. People really, really like it. One of the things uh, that we'll kind of show you as we kind of get into the product, is, uh, one of the things Robert did a really good job of is helping you learn the method and implement it. Uh, you know, I know um, educators that are in the um, in the investment space and they teach about how to look for TK crosses and how to look for uh, the different signals of the Ichimoku. And those are courses that can be very, very expensive. And what I like about this product, and, and as I said, as we go through it, we'll kind of talk a bit more about it, but um, it, it does a really good job of both educating you. And then after you know more about what it's doing and how to read the indicators, it actually does a really good job of helping you implement and find those stocks that have the signals and understand where the bullish bearish criteria are. Do you want me to talk about the indicators themselves as well? I can go over the indicators. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, but you know, I, you brought up some good points. This is something that's very time tested and there have actually been a lot of groups that have been trying to improve on the Ichimoku method. Um, you'll often see them, well, it's like, you know, we, we take these indicators, we'll try different time, time frames or more specifically um, different parameters for them. And what they've all found out is like, you know, we, we can't really beat what we what we see in the actual default standards and settings they uh they will often try and like said uh, shift those time frames around but they they usually just come back to saying you know it's like yeah we, we saw some cases where it would be better and then some cases where it'd be worth worse but it just kind of all came out in the wash so they've all just reverted back to the regular ichimoku parameters because they're that consistent and have been like I said, for 50 years. Yeah. And so, um, you know, one of the things is that it's fairly new in, in the in the West. This was something that when it was originally released in 68, you know, he had been doing his research for about 30 years um, at that point, um, trying to come up with this methodology. And, you know, when they finally released it, it was something that was only released in Japan and stuck to the Japanese markets. Um, through the 80s and stuff, a big thing that came from Japan was, you know, Japanese candlesticks. But these were, uh, Ichimoku was still stuck in the background. People didn't really see it over here. And a lot of it was because in the actual uh, presentation, it has a lot of philosophy in it that just wasn't translating over very well into English. So it was kind of left behind until the last uh, 10 to 20 years. And when it's starting to finally make uh, an appearance here in the U.S. And, and in other Western countries, it's really starting to to get that attention. That wow, this thing is still working to this day. And and even though it was designed with Japanese markets in mind, it still holds very well to all the markets it seems to be applied to, which is you know something really to show you know its robustness over time. That you know it's really good on these tools uh, or on these markets. So. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and start taking a look and I'll go ahead and uh, describe some of these indicators and, and let people see what's going on here. And so what we have here is now we're not looking at Metastock right now. We are looking at um, Reuters icon. Um, this right here is, is an example of an Ichimoku chart. And you'll notice it seems to be somewhat busy. Um, it really is a busy chart. What we have is we have five general indicators, though they're appearing to be kind of as four. We've got this right here, which is what's called a Tenkin Sun. And this one closely tries to follow the price. And basically what it is, is it's the midpoint of the last nine trading periods. Below here, following up on, on this line here, is what we call a Kaijin Sun. This is the same midpoint, but instead of it being nine periods, it's 26 periods. This one right here, this cloud, however, is what a lot of Ichimoku is about. This is the, the Ichimoku cloud, otherwise known as the Kumo. And for those of the who are sticklers, I'll make sure it's not called the Kumo cloud because Kumo means cloud. So that would be saying cloud cloud. But uh, 
but people will call it Kumo Cloud, and I'll be honest, I have been caught doing that before. But but it is known as the Ichimoku Cloud. Um, Excuse me. So, <clears throat> so this cloud, however, is is the part that's defined as that equilibrium uh, part of the of the the method, and this is basically where prices are wanting to go. Uh, where they're wanting to revert back to to show that, that you've got kind of a stability at this point um, that tries to pull them back. Now, the way that these are calculated is kind of interesting. The, the band which follows the price is closest typically is what it is, is these two values added together and then shifted 26 periods into the future. And that creates this upper boundary right here, or if it's going below, a lower boundary. Well, the bottom part, or the slower part, remember how we were talking that this right here was a 26 period midpoint and this right here was a nine period midpoint? Well, this right here is a 52 period midpoint shifted uh, 26 periods into the future. And that difference is what creates the equilibrium point um, or the cloud in the Ichimoku method. We'll actually show you how it's used in a little bit, but I just want to make sure you understand how these indicators work, what they are, what their components are. This part right here, this part coming back, um, this is called the Chiku span. What this basically is, is it's the price of the uh, underlying security. So if in this case, we're looking at the, the SP 500. Um, but it's that price, just the closing price, shifted 26 periods backwards. Now, this might seem really confusing. You've got some stuff here that's shifted forward. You've got some stuff here that's shifted backwards and some stuff that's right here along with the price. Well, remember the whole point of the Ichimoku method is that it's trying to show you um, at a glance what's kind of going on all around, not just what's going on at your exact moment in time but it's letting you know what the directions are that things are expected to go, as well as have reference from how, how the current stuff is behaving against where it is in the past. So what we're gonna do now, now that we've gone ahead and shown you some of this, is we're actually going to show you um, how it's used on Metastock, and then we're actually going to go through some of the techniques so you can see it on Metastock, um, and that way you can kind of get an idea of, of what's going on. Now here we have, um, we have the uh, the SPY, the same thing for the, the SP500 um, ETF. We're going ahead and looking at this. Now this one, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. And one of the ways that it looks different is you see that the cloud stops right here. Now that is something that's going on with Metastock, but it is something that we've been able to kind of fix by creating another window up here that shows the relative price. So this would be the price of the security as well as its cloud, what it would look like that 26 periods in the future. So as you'll notice, it stops here, but you don't get to see anything. You get to see that same part up here. And you'll notice that that is the same as what you see right here, how this from this point forward comes here and moves up. That's the same thing that you have going on here, that it's going there and moving up. So this is actually how we represent the cloud in Metastock so that um, you can actually do Ichimoku analysis in Metastock and allows you to do a complete analysis uh, the way you would in any of, your, of the other software. Along with that, though, we have our Tenkan Sen, which is this purple here, and we have our Kaijin Sen, which is red, and then we have the Chiku Span, which is kind of a really dark red that shifted back. Now, one of the uh, things that there's, or there's two basic entry concepts that are being used in Ichimoku. One of them is the direction of the Tenkan Sen versus the Kaijin Sen. Okay, You're, they're wanting it to be that the Tenkan Sen, this one right here, is above the Kaijin Sen if you're looking for a bearish signal. I'm sorry, a bullish signal, my bad. Um, if you're looking for a bullish signal, you want the Tenkan to be above. And if you're looking for bullish, you want it to be below. But it's not just simply a matter of above and below because you're also looking for the price itself to be above or below the cloud here. So here you'll notice how we're moving in a, prices are down below the cloud, and then they move up through and into above the cloud to be moving into a different direction. 
this is really um, a good thing to, to take a look at, um, how it's behaving around this cloud and how the cloud is shaped. Now, we're really, we're taking a different approach on this time than some of the other training seminars we've done. Usually we've gone ahead and looked at stocks. I'm actually setting stocks aside today so we can kind of take a more overall look at things that are going on right now. Specifically, we're, we're looking at, at market stuff today and that's why we're looking at the S&P 500 or at least the ETF of it. So you can take a look at, at how this works with, um, with general economics, you know, general trading, what the market is doing as a whole, which is really important for a lot of your trading decisions anyway. So you'll notice here at the current information we have is that we actually had that there was a cross where this uh, Taikin Sen cross, crossed above the, the Kaijin Sen. And the prices are above this cloud. Well, that's considered to be your a very strong bullish signal. And as you can see, it is actually moving up and moving in that direction before it sits and hovers around. Now, if we look at the past, how it does that, that movement, we can sit here and say, yes, it's going above, um, up and down. But one of the things to take a quick look at is you'll notice when it's hanging around in this area back here, we notice that the cloud is really, really small and really, really thin. And that's something that tells us what we should kind of be looking at this, not looking for some really heavy movement, okay? So even if we're looking at this date here, we're still seeing that it's still got some pretty small stuff over here not moving very well. We actually don't see the cloud expand until, you know, we're, we're further down the, the road. And so right here, you'll, you'll notice as we're looking forward to here, it's expanding. Price goes up and we see it expands here. This lets us know that this is where the price is ultimately trying to go to, to this area right here. This is the new equilibrium point that the price or the likes of the cloud has moved up and prices will have around there. And you'll notice that with Ichimoku all the time that as it, as it moves in a direction and it starts to swell away from the cloud, it's often not that it comes back to the cloud. It's that the cloud will move up and create a new equilibrium point and you'll see that, and then the price and the cloud will start to merge again. And then you're waiting for it to separate and go one direction or the other. The cloud will then follow and they'll come to a merging. So that is really important of how the Ichimoku method works. You know, it is a trend following system. Let's make that very clear. And this is how it tries to identify trends, is the way it breaks away from the cloud and moves away from it. But it has this leeway in the middle while it's doing that. I think I want to interrupt. Okay. By oh, audience. I didn't mean to take over your screen either. Not a problem. I just want to talk a little bit about the cloud uh, to just kind of reiterate some of the the uh, some of what uh, Robert is talking about. Um, so when you're looking at the cl cloud, it gives you a good idea of kind of what the intended future direction is, but it also asks as a support point. So uh, you see this rally where it came right back into the cloud. Use that as a support point to kind of push. It'll work the same if the stock is trending down. It'll work as a resistance area. Now, one of the things that each uh, that 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 uh, you use with Ichimoku is the size and shape do matter. So, for example, where your cloud gets really shallow, like right here, it's less significant than when it's expanded out and you have a, a much fuller cloud size. I wouldn't say it's less significant, but it tells you something different. It, when it's all tied together, it lets you know that you're really in that consolidation mode and it's trying to hold that consolidation mode. Consolidation is the natural equilibrium at that point. And so when it starts to expand and we see prices move away and the cloud expands, that gives you more clarity that it's, a, that it's going into a trend. And so you can follow up on that trend activity. John asked a question. Okay. You ready John for your question, John? Sure, why not? What is the probability of the price following the future cloud going forward? Well, the price of, is it 100%? Well, it's it's 100% that they will meet at some <laughs> point in time. Now, whether they're meeting because the cloud moves up and they match together, or you know, if the prices go down, the cloud goes down and they merge together, or whether they meet because the price reverts back towards the cloud, that's something that, that could be questionable. But at some point, they will always um, merge at some point. Um, the only time that you could have that, you know, where it doesn't is on a really, really, really long trend. And if it's a trend that never ends, 
two things. One, there is that technical possibility that, that Ichimoku would never merge. And two, you really should be in that product because <laughs> it's, well, it's just a cash cow only going in one direction, never going to stop. But at some point, they are, they are always going to merge um, in any sense of reality. And it kind of is a bit of a, if you could call it a measurement of momentum, because if something is tr uh, an object in motion, mm -hmm. right? If something tre is trending really hard, you're going to have a much wider top to bottom cloud. Right. Whereas if we're going sideways, which is what we're seeing on all of the indices this, this year, yeah. you have a much more shallow, and, much more choppy. And they're more cloud. merging together as the prices starts to flow up and around the cloud in and out of it right at that middle moment. Or, a momentum area. Ooh, more questions. Okay. How do I get the future cloud? Uh, um, in the future, so yeah. so um, to answer this question, John, one of the things that we're doing with Metastock right now um, is we're redoing the charting engine. But the reason that we have the future cloud up above is because with Metastock, you can't actually plot beyond the next bar. So anything in the future, we can't plot. And that was what uh, Robert was alluding to. Uh, in uh, Hopefully early next year, we'll be finished with a brand new charting engine with a brand new formula capability. And then at that point, we'll be able to. But in the meantime, what you'll see on the top is you'll be able to see that future cl cloud. This last price, the one that Robert's pointing to right now, is the current price. And everything to the, to the right of that is going to be the future. Yeah. So this value right here, equates to this value down here if we were looking at this closing price so that you can actually see the chart uh, projected into the future. Um, yeah, that way we'll... Show up asks um, how, what is meant by the 26 periods. That's how far it projects forward. Yeah, and, and that's a good question. Why is it 26? You know, why those nine? Why the 26? Um, and that was, again, coming back to... Um, Ichimoku Senjin's uh, determination that he was working with the Japanese markets. Um, you know, in the Western uh, arena, we're used to, to trading in like five, uh, five bar, 20 bar, because we think about our months, you know, um, our trading week and our trading month. Our trading week is five days. Um, our trading month is usually 21 to 22 days. Um, but in Japan, their trading uh, was based on six days of trading, not on five. So the nine period is based on one and a half weeks of market activity. And then the 26 periods was based upon one month. So, which is a little bit different than what we're used to the month, but that's where the, the nine and 26 comes in. And so it was to, to represent a, a Japanese month. Um, but that's where we were saying, surprisingly, they didn't actually, um, it hasn't been shown that changing those into be becoming U.S. numbers has made it any more effective. Um, people still revert back to the nine and 26, even trading on Western markets that are based upon five day a week uh, trading activity. So I'm hoping that that answers this question. Hopefully. Hopefully. If not, restate it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try again. All right, go ahead. Uh, I just didn't know if there were other questions that uh, uh, that were coming up. Yeah, I think you covered it though. Phil said. Okay. Uh, Phil said. Always going to merge did not answer the question of is it going how likely is it to be where it shows it's going to oh, be. Oh, where it shows it's going to be. And the thing is, like I said, you, you can't really know what the probability that it's going to to uh, go down versus merge in with it. Um, if it was 100% yeah. accurate, all you'd have is a cloud that was always up to the very up to right now. Because, um, you know, if you look right here, this would give you kind of a good idea mm -hmm. of what's happened, right? Yeah. Um, but but here's the other things to look at when when you're looking at this concept of Ichimoku um, in the cloud and how he was talking about how how the cloud can be uh, used as a support resistance. Other aspects of the support resistance are also tied to this uh, Kaijin Sen, and that's one of the other important things is when you are looking at it. And I'm going to pull this out a little bit. This is kind of what gives you information as to where it's going to start coming together, whether it's going to be merging or whether it's going to be falling back. So if you look at this right here, you'll see that this acts as a really good support line um, for, the, for this chart as it comes up here and lets you know, as soon as the price starts crossing below the Kaijin Sen, then you're probably not going to be getting a straight merge. Um, you're looking at it getting into reverting back. And so a lot of people will actually use this Kaijin Sen as their stop point. 
um, you know, if it falls below there, then they would be looking at getting out, even if, if it's before the cloud. And so they'll do that, especially when the price is doing a significant run up, like what you see here. Um, they would go ahead and get in and then just follow that up. Here they might get like said ticked out a little bit, but then they could go go back in and then they'd follow it all the way up to this point here. Even though it's still far above the cloud, it lets them know that they're not waiting for it to revert back or, or for the cloud to merge because it could be reverting back. You really don't necessarily know, or I, I should say, I've not done an analysis to find out what the actual percentages are, but that's how people trade because they don't know what the percentages are and how they can go ahead and pr protect their positions. So, like I said, hopefully that, that answers some more of the question. Um, and that is, like I said, an, another important point is it's not just a matter of the Kaijin Sun being above, or the Tengen Sun being above the Kaijin Sun or below, but where uh, where prices are in relation to them. Because that, that really is what that, or that Kaijin Sun is meant for is to be as a uh, support level, uh, support and resistance level, one that's tighter than the cloud itself is. So, Phil asked a question, and I think I understand the question, so I'm going to answer it real quick. Can the 26 mm -hmm. pe periods be other than 26 trading days? Uh, it's going to always be 26 periods. So if you're looking at a daily chart, that's going to be 26 days. If you're looking at a weekly chart, that'll be 26 weeks. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at an intraday chart, well, it'll be just 26 one-minute periods or five-minute periods. So I think the question is, is can we put it on a different time frame? The answer to that is yes. Um, but the look back period for the calculations is always going to be that 26 period. Well, yeah, if you're if you're working with the meta stock indicators by themselves, then that is something that you can technically go in and change yourself. Um, however, if you're using the expert advisor, which we're going to be getting into, um, that does not allow you to go ahead and change. We don't ha really have a way for setting up a period control for the expert advisor and how that would work. Um, so that is fixed to be the actual rules of the Ichimoku method. So that part is fixed. Shove asked a question that I think would be a good thing to talk about now anyway. Mm -hmm. He's saying, can we trade <laughs> using the support and resistance of the cloud? And um, so why don't we talk a little bit about the, the main buy signals? Okay. Um, what we probably be the best way to do is to actually look at the expert advisor so we can see the kind of signals that it's get that it's generating and we can actually see what they're meaning and, and what they relate to. Okay. That's so um, from here, we'll go ahead and go to the um, expert advisor and we're going to go down to Ichimoku. And we're going to start with a complete and we're going to um, attach and close and... Oh, it did not attach my bad. Sorry. Um, okay. There we go. Now, this is one, one of the things the likes of the, that we utilize for trading purposes. And um, this is where it can help teach you those signals, how they work and um, what to be looking for. The chart itself is actually um, been augmented with the expert advisor because there's two main uh, things that we're wanting to look at. One of them is whether the price is above or below, below the Kumo, because we, we don't want to trade against the trend. We're not looking at that. So we really want to know whether the price itself is above or below. And then we really also want to know whether the Tenkan Sen is above or below the Kaijin Sen. And so that's where we get the other signals to show us what's going on, um, which way we want to be looking. So as you can see right here, the price went below, and it's it's in this cloud area, so it's you know something that you probably wouldn't want to be trading much at that point anyway because of the confusion area here. But then, as you can see, it goes ahead and crosses above and breaks out, and then we start having a a movement that goes up. Um, we've got the part that goes up there. We've got that above a Kumo, and those are the two main signals. Now, outside of that, that doesn't mean that that's all you would trade on. You would actually look at other aspects too. What is the direction of the cloud? Uh, going in the future, and where is the the price of or where is the uh, chiku span in the past? Now a lot of people will tell you let let's talk about the chiku span for a minute because that is a, an important indicator. Many people will say that this is the most important indicator of the Ichimoku method. I, I disagree with that. I think it is as important as the other ones. I don't think it's the most important, but it it, it has a great deal of importance. And like I said, this is just the price shifted 26 periods back. 
But the reason that it matters is because it lets you see very clearly how the current price is behaving against past price. And as you can see, in this particular case, like right now, that the price um, being shifted back is still hovering around where it was before, which is saying it's taking some work to make some new highs there. Um, it lets you see, like I said, are we above or below where we were before? And that's really important. And, and are we you know, above or below where the cloud was before? So those kind of pieces are together. But one of the things that becomes difficult, and as we've shown before, is what if you want to look at something in the past when you're trying to learn how this works? And let's say you're looking back here and you want to know where the Chiku span is and where the cloud is actually going. Where would it be 26 periods ago? Or do you want to count back manually to figure that out? And are you thinking about that? Or most people get confused and start using the indicator up here where the price is. We also have that same problem with the cloud as people are always associating just the cloud at the spot they're looking on rather than the cloud of the future. And fortunately for that, we actually have the tool in the expert advisor that shows what those analysis are doing. And so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that right now. And this will help give us, give us some information as to what's going on in the chart at this point in time. Now there's actually a lot of other signals, but these are not main signals. These would be what you'd call your support signals. So in this, we're gonna take a look at this first part that we see um, which is what we wanted to look at the main one, which was the TK cross, whether the TK was above or below, um, whether the TK was above or below the, the Kaijin Sen. So it's known as a TK cross. And as we can see here, we had a TK cross that occurred 14 periods ago. Now, when it says it's a strong, there's three different types of TK crosses, whether they occur above the uh, cloud, in the cloud, or below the cloud. Um, and all depending upon which direction they're crossing above or below. So if you're looking for um, prices for going up, so you're looking for something bullish, then you're looking for a TK cross, uh, a bullish TK cross. But a strong one would occur above the cloud and a weak one would occur below the cloud. So if it's a weak one that's occurred, you're still waiting for the price to move up through the cloud before you would actually take action. Where if you're looking for a cross that occurs uh, a bullish cross that occurs above the cloud, that's a stronger signal considered to be a strong TK cross. And in this case, we're informed that the cross occurred 14 periods ago. And so if we look and we count back, this would be 14 periods ago when the bullish cross occurred. That's the kind of information that we can look at very quickly without having to see what's going on uh, or look into really big detail of the chart because the expert advisor is analyzing that for us. Um, after that, the next most important one is this price Kumo relationship. Basically, is the price above or below the cloud? Now, it's considering that to, oh, I moved the position where it's analyzing. It's considering that for where it is at that point, um, trying to evaluate, you know, like, so which kinds of positions you, you should be taking. And again, it defines it as bullish and bearish. Now, like, so these two that we have here are the primary direction values. But the others become really important support information. Okay, what we want to know is next signal would be what is the current Kumo direction? The current Kumo direction is whether or not the direction of the fast part of the Kumo, the Senku span A, is above or below Senku span B. Okay, in this case, we also have bullish. But then we also want to know what the future Kumo direction is. What direction is it going? Did the, did the future Kumo change direction? Well, we can see up here, if we look at this price, we see that no, it's not. It's actually being very bullish. It's looking at going up towards that direction. Then we have, where is the Chiku span related to the Kumo? Remember the Chiku span is this one that's, that's several periods back. I keep moving that. Um, it's 26 periods back. And is that above or above, uh, below the Kumo? We also wanna know where is Chiku span related to um, the price? And then we want to know how far away is the Kumo twist. Now, what's a Kumo twist? Well, that's where the Kumo actually changes direction. We want to know whether this is occurring um, in the past or in the future. Now, the nice thing about Ichimoku Master is that if there's a price change that occurs in the future, you might not see it right here. It would occur up here. And if you didn't actually have this uh, chart applied, 
it would still make sure that you knew that in the future that something had occurred and it will let you know how far in the future it did occur and we can see that if we move on other spots and here's one of the nice advantages with the, the plugin is that it will allow you to do this analysis on every bar as it moves through the system so right now it's analyzing on on the most recent and and that's really easy or often to analyze when you're only looking at the most recent bar but when you're trying to get comfortable with the system when you're trying to learn it get a real understanding about how it moves you want to evaluate it in the past and when you do that all of the stuff gets mushed together and gets confusing so with metastock and ichimoku master we can click on any bar in the past and it will do an evaluation of what's going on at that bar so it'll let you know whether something has occurred you know six periods ago in this case um this is the part i wanted to point out so for kumo twist it will let you know that the twist is occurring nine periods in the future so if we were looking here on this bar we can look forward and see that there's a Kumo twist up there. Now we're seeing this in past data, but it will also let you know about this in current data. And so that's the really nice part about this is it lets you see what's going bullish and bearish. We see in this case, we have a TK cross that's bearish. We have a price Kumo relationship that's bullish. And everything at this point is basically saying we probably don't wanna be involved in it at this point because it's really being unstable in a lot of its direction and its, and its position. If we come back here, we can take looks at, a look at things too and say, oh, wow, look at how well that's doing. Yes, it was bullish. We kind of already knew that and can tell. But you can also follow it through um, various movements as it goes along. The nice thing about Metastock and this expert advisor is it allows you to go back and forth one bar at a time as you're watching its movement. So you can go ahead and move forward and it will evaluate it on each bar as it moves to see when there's changes that occur. And as you can see on this bar here, we had a definite change. The price chemo relationship um, basically went to neutral. And what that means is that the price came inside of, of that Kumo area. And whenever the price is inside of the Kumo, um, you do not want to be trading. Remember, that's that equilibrium point. That's where it basically says, you know, there is no directional information at this point. And so it goes to neutral and we see that the price relationship goes bearish. So this gives you lots of information to help try and figure out what trade you should be utilizing. Um, is there another question that was coming in? You were... oh, there's a couple. James uh, asked a question. He says, uh, initially when I apply my expert advisor, I don't get the same green and red arrows. So I'll answer that one real quick. Mm -hmm. um, by, uh, by default, uh, the plugin doesn't actually show the arrows and um, that's because Robert uh, likes to see a cleaner version of the chart. That's that's all. Uh, that's all me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I prefer to see the signals where the major signals are coming in. So to turn that on, uh, what you'll do is you just go to Expert Advisor right here, and then you'll go to Properties, and on the Symbols tab, you'll just turn them on. You just put check marks in there, click OK, they're turned on. Okay. And so if you want to be able to see those uh, signals on the chart, just again. Expert Advisor, uh, right click here, Expert Advisor Properties, go to the Symbols tab and just check these all. And that'll show you your TK cross long, your TK cross short, your close above the Kumo, your close below the Kumo. You're welcome, James. Um, I'm glad you asked that because I may not have, they've just always been on for me. So. And they're always off for me because yeah. I, I like the cleaner chart. Yeah, uh, just still ask. Let's see if we can. Uh, if the 26 periods are shown to the right of the latest price and the highest line of the calculation is higher than the current price, does this say to buy? What else must be aligned to buy? Well, this right here shows the stuff that you're looking for to be um, someone in alignment. And like I said, the first two signals are the really key points that you want to have in alignment. Those are, are the primary signals that you want to be looking at. Everything else is more uh, of, of a support. I'm, oh. I'm trying to end that actually. Here, let me have the mouse. I wanted to, uh, actually, since since I've taken over the presentation right now, there, uh, just to kind of get really, really specific about what we're looking for in terms of buy-sell signals, there's really two signals that'll give you buy signals. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when the cross right here happens uh, from the Tikasen to the, uh, of the Kijusen. Oh, the Tenkin Sen above the, the or the Tenkin Sen above the Kaijin Sen. That's what I said. Okay. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> no, I, I, again, uh, um, we have a like our, our video editor. Um, 
uh, 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 he went to Japan and spent several years there and he loves uh, when I give a demo on these because I am so good at saying the words. But the other main, so there's that one, if the TK crosses, if there's a TK cross to the upside, you'll get a buy signal. If there's a TK cross to the downside, you'll get a sell signal. But you only want to trade those TK crosses if it's above the Kumo. If it's on the same side as the Kumo, mm -hmm. as the, or the price is on the same side of the Kumo that the signal is being generated, or at least in the direction of the movement. And, and so you could actually have a weak cross where um, if it's going below, if the cross occurs down here and crosses above, you wouldn't necessarily get in until the price went above. So if the price goes above the cloud, and you had a cross so that the the Tenkin is above the Kaijin, those two would be your technically your buy signals. So number one, and these are the only reasons you should buy with, with uh, an Ichimoku method. Number one, you get the TK cross. Number two, the price of the security goes up above the cloud for the first time. Correct, and that, that would be your primary uh, entry. But again, you still have the other signals to let you understand whether or not um, there's more involved, whether, you know, the stability, whether we're looking at a flat market. They help you evaluate the strength of your main signal. Yeah, so you can determine whether you really want to be in that trade or not. And a, for example, the future Kumo direction, I think is really, really important. Um, this is this is something that if this is giving me anything opposite than these, I'm not going to take that that direction. It's just something I will not do. Some people are fine with that. I, I am not. Um, as far as the Chiku span relation to the Kumo, I'm not that big of a deal on, but I, it is important for me that for the Chiku span to have a good relation to the price. Um, I do want it to be on, on, uh, I want the, my Chiku span to be above the price if I'm looking bullish, you know, and below it if I'm looking bearish. So, um, like I said, those things are, are really, really important. One of the nice things here that we also have is we also show how long it's been since the last Kumo twist occurred. That's a really big deal because in this case you can see it occurred 166 periods ago. It helps to show you how established that trend is becoming and it keeps growing larger and larger. Or if we start seeing that it's, that it's small, we might want to take a little bit more, have a little bit more trepidation as to whether we're going to actually enter that trade. We might want to have it establish some kind of stability and this lets us know when that or how long that is and how long it's been occurring. So um, I'm hoping that that answered the question. Are we all good on that? He didn't. He didn't ask more questions. Okay. <laughs> right. So I assume so until so, proven otherwise. Yeah. Now one of the things also to take a look at at what's going on here is, um, along with it showing these signals very very quickly, um, like it allowing you to do an evaluation. It also lets you know that there's several different versions of Ichimoku Masters um, Expert Advisor, and right now we're showing the complete one. And the nice thing about the complete one is it gives you all the information about each type of signal and what it means. Now this right here on each one, it'll actually give you a description of what the signal means in black. But then it'll also show you what it means on this bar as it's going through. So, and it does this for each of the signals in the system so you know what's going on. Um, and also lets you know like what the concepts are stops uh, should be at various points. So, you know, you've got loose stops, tight stops, medium stops, depending upon where the price is in relation to certain uh, parts of the chart, that it figures out all for you automatically. Um, but one of the things is, as you get used to it and you start learning the Ichimoku method, you don't necessarily want to keep reading what everything is each time, and you're going to want to change that so it gives you a little bit less um, information. And so what we have available is after that, you can move to something that removes the descriptions and only shows you the interpretation of, of each of those bars or each of those values. That way you can see what it means on that bar without having to look at all the support stuff. But then even after that, you're going to say, you know what, now I've got that down, now I've learned Ichimoku, now I've got the idea, I really just want the signals. So from there, we also provide a minimal version, which you can go ahead and apply. And that gets rid of all the other stuff and just shows you the signals and support and resistance, um, you know, uh, positions and what they mean and further stop losses. So, you know, we've tried to tailor this so that as you get better with the system and with the method, 
that it becomes more optimized for your ability to look at it. Now, one of the things to also consider, um, which I'm going to have Jeff show you in just a moment, is that these signals are actually available in the expert or in the um, explorer for finding uh, trading opportunities. And um, what it will do is it'll actually look through and quickly show you on a report of stocks or whatever what all of these things are doing right at a flash. So you don't have to look at every single chart and apply an expert advisory to each one of them. It'll just show you in a really quick thing. Uh, and I'm actually going to have Jeff uh, show that to you. But I, I'm looking, is, was there another question that came in or is there? Um, yeah, he wanted to clarify. So if you could um, go through that uh, or attach that expert again. Which one? Um, the Ichimoku, either any one of them. We okay. just want to look at the signals because uh, Phil had wanted a bit of a clarification okay. uh, about um, the, the PK cross. So, mm -hmm. Phil, I think this will answer your question quite a bit. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over, I'm just going to shut down this commentary for a minute. And I'm going to zoom in so that this chart is nice and clear for you. I want to point out where the buy and sell signals are coming in here. Okay, you'll get one initially when the price closes, crosses up through the cloud, and you'll also get them when um, the Tenkan Sen and the Kijitsen crosses. So here it was a, a, a negative cross that would give you a sell signal. Now, you're never going to take the, a sell signal while the, the, the price is above the Kuma, which is why we've got that ribbon right here. Well, you could take a sell, but it would be more of an exit if you're doing it. You're never going to take a short. You're never going to take a short. Yeah, thank you for the clarification. Yes. Okay. So what we're saying is, is if you get a cross right here, which happened, I don't know, this is uh, uh, July 12th. Here you had a cross. Uh, uh, you, here you had that bullish cross, and you're above the cloud. And so this is one you could consider. And what you would do is actually go into that commentary. And you might want to uh, just take a look at where everything is lining up. So in this particular example, you've got your TK cross, which is bullish. It was also what uh, he's labeling a TK, a strong TK signal. Because it occurred above the Kumo for a bullish position. Uh, your price to Kumo relationship, in other words, the price is above the cloud, which is mm -hmm. bullish. Your, the current Kumo direction, which is uh, it's headed up, so that's bullish. Your future Kumo or cloud direction is also bullish. So you can see that right here. And so this right here would be a very, very strong buy signal on the chart. So, and as you can see, even from that, it's gone ahead and, and been pushing up through that. Now, like uh, what the other person was saying earlier, that doesn't mean it guarantee that it's going to stay up there. It could still go ahead and revert back to, to the existing cloud. Um, but as it retains up here longer, this is going to also move up. The Kaijin Sen is also going to move up closer to it as well and acting as both a support line as well as a position to get out if you want to exit at that. A lot of people actually don't use this as an exit. They'll actually wait for it to revert to the cloud before they go ahead and exit. And you can actually choose how you want to do your exits when you're in that trade. And then you'll notice right here, um, the, when we talk about support and resistance, or uh, they're listed right here in terms of actual values, but he also lists suggested stops. Like if you wanted a tight stop, you'd use Kijin Sen. Um, and there's 273. If you wanted a medium or loose, he's also giving values for that. Yeah. And right now you'll notice that, yes, they are the same um, as your support and resistance position. But that doesn't always retain that um, because sometimes those positions are not necessarily available. So, for example, in this particular position, you do have a medium stop and a loose stop, but you don't have um, a tight stop because the price is already below that and it's no longer available as a stop. And so in this case, your tight would have already been passed and you could be waiting for it to be uh, stopped out by the cloud itself, either by the top of the Senku span or the bottom of it in this case, which is what it's looking for. I'm actually going to attach the full. Um, there is another question, and I want to look at the full because I want uh, we won't always have Robert here to kind of help us with this thing. Um, but the question is, is, is what is the Chiku span relationship for price? Is it important to trading? And so the reason I was actually going to reply that is, as you're using this and learning about the method, this is the expert that you're going to use. And you can come in here and say Chiku span relationship price. It explains, I'm going to let Robert talk about this, but it, it explains it to you. And even kind of in black, and gives you kind of the current 
uh, analysis of it uh, right now. So would you like to paraphrase what's right there on the screen? Well, yeah, basically <laughs> the, the whole point is that if the Chico span is trying to compare where it is versus 26 periods ago, and the philosophy is, is that if the cheek, if 26 periods ago, or, or if I should say the price now is in the same range as price as 26 periods ago, then you really don't have any real movement. Um, you really don't have any direction. It would be the same as um, a 26 period rate of change that's heading sitting at zero. Um, so you're looking, you want, if you're looking for bearish, you want to know that the current price is above what it was 26 periods ago. So at least it has that upward movement and momentum and it's going somewhere. Um, where if it's, if the Chiku span is below where it was 26 periods ago, even if you've got a bullish signal, it's not a really strong bullish signal because it's really not showing that it's making any new moves and really isn't technically in an upward trend yet. It really needs to be able to pass any of the previous activity that would have moved against it to be able to looking at a trend because after all as a trend following system it's trying to figure out what that trend is and so if 26 periods ago the prices are above what the what the uh um chiku span is then you really don't know that you're not or that you're in an upward trend you it could still just be consolidating waiting for another trend to start going downwards again so that's really kind of what's going on with the Chiku span, especially right. in relation to price. Dude, it's uh, uh, I'm gonna I, I want to kind of go in here. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that helps, Shayo. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's getting later. You, you want to show the other stuff on the so. Yeah. But, so let's talk a little bit about finding opportunities with the market. Uh, you know, um, scanning is one of my favorite things in Metastock. So let's run a quick scan. I'm going to kind of walk you through exactly how the report looks. And I want you to point you, first of all, to all of the bullish bearish criteria here. There's there's a total of six of them. Um, yeah, there's actually uh, seven that are listed here, but they're effectively six. Okay. So. so let's go ahead and if we want to define a strong Ichimoku signal, let's see in the market today, we have a scan for that. So if we come into the Metastock scanner, uh, I'm gonna, just going to go to Ichimoku signals. And um, what I'm going to do is we'll run a real quick uh, scan. I'm going to actually do some online data because I didn't uh, download data today. But we'll do a quick scan of maybe the um, S&P. Um, actually, let's do the Dow. We might not get any results on the Dow. Though. Let's do. Well, you'll 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 get results on everything, whether. Um, All right. So let's should it, just do the Dow because it's something. 30 stocks. It'll yeah, give us actually, a quick result. Yeah, actually, Yeah, go ahead and do that. Okay. So I'm just going to find the Dow Industrials. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and check mark that. We're just going to run through all 30 of the Dow Industrials, and that should be fairly quick. Um, and it's going to go through and kind of find any that had a buy signal or a sell signal today. And it's also going to kind of collate the score in such a way that we can kind of rank these. So if we're scanning through thousands of them, we can kind of see the ones that we kind of generally like. And uh, it rejected all 30 of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's find something. Let's else. do S&P 500, uh, which will give us some more opportunity um, out there. Uh, we definitely That's want true, to because it is looking specifically for signals, if I remember. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. Okay. Um, go. Okay. And then um, Robert is going to do a rendition of Jeopardy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he just looks at me like he pays <laughs> No, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out a witty response with that. <laughs> so now it's going to go through the yeah. S&P. I lost on Jeopardy, Jeopardy. <laughs> baby. Anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, this is taking a bit longer um, than normal. Well, I'll let it finish because it, it does have a lot, and it is a standard group that Mm -hmm. people are looking at yeah but but you know let's explain what it's doing it is looking for those positions where um there was both a uh, price above the kumo um or below the kumo and that there was a tk cross in the same direction on the first occurrence where both of those are occurring at the same time um because you really it doesn't really want to show you everything that comes up you really just want to know when there's something new to be paying attention to um, it's also looking for when you have what's called a re-entry. Uh, basically, if the price and is above uh, the Kumo and the TK is also above, you know, are, are bullish, and then let's say it crosses below, let's say the TK crosses below, 
um, to create bearish, but the price never moved below the Kumo, um, or it never went into it. And then the TK came back around to give another signal to say that would be like a re-entry signal. So it lets you know whether it's a main signal or whether it's a re-entry signal. So, um, and then it'll also let you see as a really quick scan uh, looking across what all of those indicators are doing, what they actually mean. It looks like we're just about done here. All right, and we have signals. Yeah, there we got signals. So here we got, uh, here's the ones that have signals. Out of the uh, uh, 500 we loaded, we rejected about 464. So again, mm -hmm. what we want to do is focus on the ones that have a current opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so the two right here is going to give you, uh, in, in uh, do you remember, uh, it's a long main signal. Yeah, so it's the first time that there was a signal in a particular direction. Is that across above the cloud? Across above the cloud, as well as a TK cross in that same direction. Okay. So it doesn't really matter which one occurred first, as long as when the second one occurred to make the signal valid, that becomes the main signal. Okay. That also can show one, which is, um, as you can see, I'm, I'm hovering over the cheat sheet here. That would, would be, be the re-entry. Re-entry signal. Mm -hmm. A short, a minus one would be short re-entry, and a short main would be a minus two. Mm -hmm. uh, here you've got the TK cross. Yes, and the TK cross is done as a one, two, or three, depending upon whether it's a weak, a neutral, or a strong cross. So a weak would be, for bullish, uh, a one would be a weak cross, a two would be a neutral, and a three would be a strong cross, bullish cross. Same thing, negatives, if you're looking at it for the other direction. So this is telling you there's a signal, but this is telling you it's a weak signal. No, no, not saying that when the TK cross occurred, it had the, the cross occurred while it was in the Kumo. And okay. so, but, so now it's in the direction, and it is, or um, in this case, actually, it's negative. Um, so it's kind of crossing um, in, the, in the other way. So there is a signal on one. In this case, it's the, um, like I said, initial cross. It lets you know the position, price against Kumo. And then it comes and gives you a score that, puts them all together. And this is the part that actually is the power mm -hmm. that we're looking at. So rank it on that column. So in this case, we can actually see where the strengths are or where the strengths are in the different signals. If we're looking here, we can see that like a score of six means that all of these are lined up together, that we've got a bullish and we've got a bear, or um, that, that there are no bear signals. That doesn't mean that I'm necessarily always gonna take that. Just, just because it's all six doesn't mean that I'm confident in it. I still wanna look at the chart. I still wanna evaluate it see you know how it's behaved in the past because that is really also an important part of Ichimoku as well as any trading system you should have some evaluation of what it's doing um, but it lets me know that everything's high or going together usually what I'm looking for is also something like a four or a five because four or five often's turn into sixes and so I'm that gets me a little bit closer to starting to hop on a, a, the beginning part of a trend depending upon what what's going on here I of course do want to have it where um, you know the the cross and, and the price come relationship um, are all doing you know working well together I still want that so um, but like I said this thing right here lets you see very quickly what those things are doing and allows you to very quickly see how many of them are in the same direction to see whether or not you want to explore further with them or not. So, what, uh, what Trey asked was the max min. Okay, so the score, just to kind of, I'm going to put this up on the PowerPoint just so that it's very clear. If we're looking at, actually, let's just look at an expert. Uh, the maximum is six, the minimum, minimum is, is minus neg six. negative six. And that, those would be. Uh, full six would be all the signals are bullish, and negative six would be all the signals are bearish. Should we pay, pick a favorite? Sure. Let's right. look at all the fours. Care. Yeah. <laughs> so Let's we're going to look at L, CMA, HFC. Uh, Robert's going to give us his favorite. Sure. <laughs> not a recommendation to buy tomorrow. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> since I, yeah, have a little but we're just having fun here. So uh, let's go ahead and close that scan down. And uh, all three of those charts should have opened if I can get. Okay. And uh, we had a few charts. I'm going to basically, let's move this expert out of here for now because we had a few charts that were open already. Um, so let's just stack these out. We were looking at the debt. We were looking at the S&P earlier. If we had time, we were going to look at the Euro and the S&PY. We're not going to have time to do that. So we'll just close those down. And... Um, 
So here we've got the different, the six different one, or the six, the three fours yeah. out of those. And, and maybe we should go into the commentary again and show them where that probably would be at. a good idea. Um, so we're going to go ahead, but we're just going to do the minimal. We're not going to look at all the big details. Um, so if we come down here, we're just going to do the minimal, and we're going to take a look at that. And here we see that you know this right here would be like I said this would be the four that is going um, on there. You know even though it shows the like I said it's five, um, the current Kumo direction, uh, Chico span relationships, things like that. These things are not necessarily, um, like so one of them is kind of redundant signal. That's why I'm not necessarily counting it. Mm -hmm. So, but in this case, we see that the parts we're looking at, the TK cross was bullish, okay? And it was a neutral TK cross that occurred four periods ago, okay? Um, price Kumo relationship is, is also bullish. And so, um, but it looks like it's just barely. And so if I'm getting in here, we can see, yes, it's technically above. I'll be honest, to me, this is not a strong buy. This thing is so close and hovering, plus the fact that there's not a lot of stuff going on. I mean, it, this thing is spending so much time in the cloud. I'm going to want a little bit more clarification before that thing comes through. You want a trend to confirm? I really kind of want a trend to confirm. And this right here, I might watch this to see if there's going to be a good breakout. Um, but just in the way that's looking at right now, you know, at that edge, I would be wanting something else. But here's the good side. We can see it does have the ability to trend. So that's a good side to look at. So if that's the case, I am really looking for some type of confirmation to say that that's worth hopping in. But you can see it spent a lot of time merged in with that cloud. And everything's been been hovering in there, and so, it's very good at keeping me out of the trade. So, at that would you point. like to see a, a good strong move above the cloud before you went into? This I'd one? like to see a kick above the cloud, something that says I'm actually trying to exit here, not just lazily moving my way out. So we have this one as a wait. This would certainly, <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and look at the other two. Sure. Uh, let's go ahead and grab uh, this one here, and we'll apply that same expert. And, you know, here we've got something a little bit more. We've got everything, again, going the same direction except for the current Kumo direction. And honestly, the current Kumo direction is not that big of a deal to me, especially when the, when the future Kumo direction is showing to be in the direction of the trend. So this right here is not a, a killer for me. Um, but as I take a look at it, I see, yes, it's coming around. It's doing something really nice right here. Here we've got um, the cross that occurred back here, occurred four periods ago. And this is the first time that it's closed outside. Now, in something like this, um, here's my big concern looking at this. Okay. First, if we look at the future, Kumo direction, yes, it might have gone a hunt and done this, but we can see it barely changed direction. This thing is saying that the in the future it might be bullish, but that twist occurs 26 periods in the future, which is exactly what we're seeing up there. It's way up here that this is happening. Um, this right here, I'm kind of I would be uncomfortable with, um, even though it shows that it can have some really good trend in the past. It's really hovering right around there. And that just makes me a little bit concerned. So this is something I wouldn't necessarily be looking into, or I certainly would, would want to have a little bit more uh, confirmation. But at the moment, I, I would probably just pass on that. I think we're going to see three of the very similar charts because they, they, they're going to look like the market. <laughs> That's, yeah, very possibly so. Um, and then finally, like so we're taking a look at this, you know, and... Uh, see yeah we see that this one also had a big break but here's the difference between this and the last one the last one if we think of a candlestick action the opening and closing were down here at the bottom of the bar this one's open or closing way at the top of the bar so this we're actually seeing that it moved from down moved through um, and then came up and as we look at that though here's the thing that I would be problematic with. This right here doesn't show that it really has had a lot of history of trending. 
Um, so this would be my thing to, again, just for that alone. And I see that the price really is hovering around this equilibrium point and has been, it looks like for almost six months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously this could be a big breakout just because of today, but I would say of the three that came up, the first one is the one that I would put on a wait. I'd agree. Mm -hmm. I, I would take, want to take a look at that and, and come back to that and say, you know, that's going to be on my watch list. I, I'll, I'll check it in the next couple of days to see if it's something I want to participate in. The other two I'm not entirely comfortable with. I, yeah, I would even put them on a watch list. Yeah, the first and, and I'm one, not going to. The first one, yeah. It, uh, and, and let's talk about the criteria that we're going to – The I think particularly what I would look for is like – this to kind of separate a little bit from the cloud. Yeah, I want to see something that says it's going to go up because right now it looks like that it's come back for a pullback. We, we see this come back here, kind of if you want to call the retracement or whatever. Um, it, it's gone ahead and pulled back to the to the cloud, and now it looks like it's it's creating a nice smooth movement that it could go ahead and start breaking out. It could just be going sideways, but the movements of it seem to be fairly consistent, and they're not jumping all over the place. Mm -hmm. So if this thing does start going up, it's got a good chance that it will keep going up. Mm -hmm. And um, look at the run it had uh, back in Yeah, it, it was a beautiful run. Absolutely so, beautiful. Yeah, I think it's my favorite too. So um, so that's just like the example of using the Explorer to do a really quick evaluation and uh, and see what's going on. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, uh, we are officially in overtime. So I want to talk, I uh, just kind of want to recap a little bit about what it does. <laughs> And just kind of give an offer for you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think it was James that that was is using the Ichimoku. I I, I hope you like it. Uh, it's definitely been a very very well received product for us. Um, I, uh, uh, I I'd recommend that you try it. And again, if uh, what we're looking at is we're looking to kind of simplify Ichimoku, which is a method that he started creating in the 30s, released it in. Late six, 1968. 1968. I, I never had the exact year before. I'd have changed that in my PowerPoint notes. Uh, but, you know, literally there are people that just say, okay, well, here's the basis of my class is going to be look for these TK crosses or look for the uh, Kumo cloud crosses. And those are the two main signals. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're looking at kind of learning about the Ichimoku method, let's say you know nothing about it. I love the attention to detail that Robert put into this thing, where he actually goes in and specifically in the commentary breaks down each individual um, component and tells you whether they're bullish or bearish, and then gives you in black kind of a description of what they are, and in blue what it's currently doing and why it kind of goes into that score. Uh, I love the way that the scan kind of puts that all together so that you can, if you want to go in like we just did and focus on the fours, you can focus in on the fours and it's just going to give you a list of those as well. Um, and in terms of in terms of kind of the information, I think this plugin is very helpful because it's going to, if you're new to the Kumo, it's going to help you learn about the Kumo. And then when you're more familiar about the, with the Kumo, it's going to help you implement it in your trading. And it's a very, very popular method. Uh, people that are in this industry charge for classes up into the thousands of dollars just to kind of teach you a little part of this and it's something this is something that's going to walk you through it it's also time tested he's been uh, it's been public domain um since uh 48 right 68 68 <laughs> since 1968 what robert yeah, said so 50 uh, years this year yeah and it's still incredibly popular it's time tested it's proven uh, and I think that's why people like it so much. Robert, you did a great job with it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, here's just a, a listing, but I think we did a pretty good job. If you're curious, it does have system testing in there. Uh, we showed the scan. We showed the expert advisor. The system testers are, because you can use uh, different stops in different scenarios, um, it kind of gives you a good idea, but it's not a complete benchmark. No, no, it really isn't. And the thing is, the Ichimoku method really didn't include a, a true stop mechanism. It was more of guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, so we've put in some, like I said, showed those different stop levels. Not to say that these are the ones that you will take, but these are the ones to figure out what your comfort levels are. Um, so you can figure out, you know, I, if you feel that you want to do it really tight, uh, obviously if like there's a trend that's jumping up really fast, you're probably going to want to take a tighter stop so you can lock in profits. If something's a little bit slower, you might want to pull back your stop a little bit, give it some breathing room. And these give you suggestions based upon what people have been using. Um, 
so but yeah the actual mechanism or method really ne never had a true exit it was only the idea of trying to figure out how to determine those trend breakouts and follow them along uh one last question i'm okay. going to try and answer this and then let you correct me all right <laughs> what does the width of the cloud indicate i'm going to say that it indicates strength well it does the, the, as as a trend moves the cloud gets wider um and then as prices come together as they consolidate the cloud narrows out um it's really like not not much more complicated than that um so you want to look for places where you see an expansion of the cloud in the future and that really is a good signal for the price to go ahead and start moving in that direction as well now obviously like everything else there's no guarantees of it but it certainly um shows uh like what, what you're trying to look for and that's why when it's going in a trend you'll have three different stop uh levels options one of them being the the uh, kaijin sen one of them being the top of the cloud one of them being the bottom of the cloud and that way you can try and figure out what your comfort level is but the stronger the trend the wider that cloud's going to become or what actually ends up becoming really nice is when you get a strong trend and that cloud is narrow that actually means that um the the trend is going so smoothly and consistently that everything's moving up at the same rate and you don't see that very often usually you see the big widening of the cloud you don't see the cloud staying thin moving up together but um but it's when you start seeing the cloud generally being thin and you usually when it's thin it's going to be moving sideways and so that's a good time to not be playing the markets be or playing that particular market because it's not really going anywhere. Everything's hovering inside that that middle ground. Greg and James, I'm gonna Greg and James, I'm gonna answer both of your questions at the same time. Um, yes, we recorded it, and within one hour you'll get a replay uh, in your inbox. So uh, yeah, I found that functionality. Uh, uh, I found that GoTo will actually automatically send a webinar uh, within a uh, recording within an hour, and uh, we've been doing it ever since. So. Um, you'll get it automatically. The price of this add-on is only $399. That's a one-time price. Um, the special that we're going to do on it is $299. So for coming to the class today, we're going to let you try it uh, for $299, absolutely uh, backed by our money-back guarantee. So you can try it, learn about it, make sure that it's going to help you with what you're doing. If it doesn't, you can get a refund. We're not going to. We're going to ask you why you didn't like it. Uh, the reason we do that isn't to harass you about it. We want to make sure you got it installed properly and that uh, you didn't have a technical issue we can help you with. But uh, other than that, if, if you don't think it's going to be helpful for you, you can return it. And I like to call that a pretty good risk reward ratio. I think, I think Robert yeah. would agree. So there's a couple of different ways you can order. Um, we do have uh, uh, some sales guys that are available to take phone calls. Uh, it, you can give us a call at 800-882-3040. You can also order it online at metastock.com slash TSA Itchy, I-C-I-H-I. And it's fairly easy. For those of you that don't have Metastock, we kind of showed uh, some of my favorite features today. Um, it is and has been rated the best software in its price category now for 25 years in a row. And so if you haven't used Metastock, you really need to try it. We'll give you a trial as part of this. So you can actually try Metastock for free. Really, your risk is zero. Because if you don't like, if you pay for Ichimoku Master, which is only $299, you decide that it's not going to help you. Normally $399, by the way. You get a refund. Uh, very, very low risk. We're, we only want you to keep the products that help you make money. Um, so if you come up to this page, you can watch me do a bit of a, a video. I go into a little bit. Of, but if you just scroll down to the bottom, um, if you own Metastock, just click this box. Uh, go ahead and order now. If you need a Metastock subscription trial, you can either do the DC trial, which means daily charts, or you can do the real-time trial. Or you just select the one that you want. Since you're getting 30 days for free, my recommendation is unless you're sure you want to use daily charts, sign up for the real time because then that way you can play with it real time and use it on all of the intraday time frames um, so unless you're uh unless you work full time like i do and you don't have time to look at charts during the day and you're just going to be using this after hours just try the real time uh, you'll also get zenith and we won't talk a lot about what that is um, but it's a it's a, a fantastic news product that reuters spent uh, about a billion dollars on it's backed by like 300 
um, different news bureaus, about, I want to say, 2,600 journalists that put news into it. It's the best, one of the best products that's available on the market for news. So uh, you'll be able to try that as, out as well if you do the real time. And I would say do the real time. You can always switch to DC. If you're sure that you're not going to be looking at this with uh, during the day, go ahead and go with the daily chart subscription. The other thing that I want to mention is um, last year when we uh, when we launched this product, and I'm just taking I'm taking you up to my downloads page or the page that'll be available for you after you order the product. And here's the download to install the Ichimoku Master and the manual. Uh, one of the things that uh, Robert and I did was we sat down and recorded a master class or a boot camp or whatever you want to call it. I went through and very specifically showed how step by step to go in and set up the scans and how to manipulate the expert advisor, that kind of stuff. And Robert actually went in and, and talked about how he was how he uses it in his own trading. And so that's a that's a master and class. I, I included my secret sauce indicator that I use. Yeah, he, he did include some personal tricks. Yeah. So that's available to you instantly as well. Again, uh, what do you have to lose, right? 30 day trial. 30-day uh, money-back guarantee on the Ichimoku Master. Uh, give us a call, 800-882-3040. A uh, couple of comments at the end. Uh, like another, will you send out the replay? Yes, yes, we're going to send out the replay. It'll be there within an hour as soon as GoToWebinar is ready with it. Uh, Frank says, thanks for the replay. We Very good show. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I don't know how this format works. I actually love it when Robert comes in because... You know, I usually just try and shut my mouth because I feel like um, if I interrupt somebody that's speaking, I'm I'm interrupting them, right? But with here with Robert, we can look at each other. I can say I can tap him on the shoulder and say, "Hey, let me talk for a minute," and uh, it comes off. And it's all good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Trey says great stuff. <laughs> always interrupt. Yeah, I always. <laughs> all right. So that being said, I want to say thanks for all of you that come, that came today. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, if there's anything we can do to help you, uh, give us, uh, let us know, and uh, try the program out. What do they have to lose, Robert? Uh, really, not not much at all. Yeah. <laughs> so. the, at worst, you're gonna have a much deeper knowledge of one of the most popular methods out there to yeah. look at a stock. Yeah, your risk is that you could could risk learning about Ichimoku. <laughs> That's the minimum. And then and you could so decide, hey, it doesn't. I don't like this. Yeah. And it doesn't work for you, and that's fine. But try it out because that's the real risk there. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go play with my kids. I hope you guys have a great night, and I'll see you at the next one. Final thoughts? Uh, just thank you very much for uh, letting me talk to them again, and I'm glad all of you could, could attend. All right. Signing out, guys. Have a good one.